Hi there and welcome to this super quick Godot tutorial in which the idea is for you to start off creating your own Godot games as quick as possible. So let's get started right away and first of all go to godotengine.org and press download latest then over here it says Godot Engine. you're gonna give it a second it's gonna download this zip file so we're gonna show it in the folder and you will just have to extract it all. Once that is done, you're going to be having this folder and over here just open up this one that says stable Windows 64 in my case, not this one that says console, this one is the actual application, the other one is just a console and we don't want that. So let's start off by going to the top left, create, okay, you can give your project a name, so for example tutorial, you can save it wherever you want, so I'll just save it on my downloads and I will press create. Now the first thing when you open Godot that you have to do is not panic, I know there are lots of things that maybe you don't understand completely, that's uh, alright, okay? Uh, so the main thing I have to know, here at the top you can go to the 2D mode, okay, in which we're going to be actually creating the things for this course. Usually learning 2D is easier than 3D, but in reality they have a lot of things in common. And basically Godot works itself with nodes. Anything that you want to create in your game is a node, okay? The, the formal definition would be that the node is the basic creation unit in Godot, that's the formal definition if that helps, but the, the easiest way to understand it is that anything is a node. So do you want a camera in your game? That is a node. Do you want to add audio in your game? That is a node. Um, do you want to add some buttons? That is a node. So anything that you want to add, any game object that you want to add in your game, that is a node. So let's say that for this uh, super quick video we want to set up a player. So what we are going to start doing is set up the player scene. So for this, we want to go here to other node. And here we want to look for a character body to denote. Why a character body to denote? Because this is a physics body specialized for characters that we are going to be moving with a script. Not only this, but also the important thing about this node, okay, when we add it, we can also rename it with a double clicking on it. Player. If we attach a script with this button while having it selected over here, if you go to template, you're going to be finding this template character body 2D basic movement. So this is the only node that has already a template created by Go developers that will allow us to super quickly set up 2D movement. So once this is done, we're going to press create and here we're going to be having this script. So it's pretty easy to understand what is going on here. We have two constants, which are basically values that are stored. So this is the value of the speed. This is the value of the jump velocity. So in order to store values in game development, okay, or at least in Godot, you have variables and you also have constants. Both of them have the similarity that store some kind of values, okay? But the thing is that variables, the value can vary and the, the value of the constant does not vary, okay? So if now here I wanted to modify the value of speed to whatever it is, I would not be able to do that. I would indeed receive an error. So this code is pretty easy to understand, so here we are adding the corresponding gravity, here we are handling the jump when we are pressing a certain key, and not only that, but we are also on the floor. And then with these last lines of code, we are basically moving left or right, depending on if we are pressing the left or right keys, as simple as that. Now let's make sure that this scene is saved, so let's go to scene, save scene, and uh, let's save it. As you can see, our file system is kind of getting a little bit uh, unorganized, so let's right click here on rest folder, create new folder, let's call this one scenes, okay, and let's drag and drop our scene, and let's create another one, so let's right click on the resources folder, create new folder, scripts, and let's put over there our player script, just to have everything a little bit more organized. Now for this player, we're going to need a couple things. Once again, remember everything that we want to add is a node. So we will select this player node, go to a plus icon and add a sprite, which is basically to display images. So we can drag and drop the code icon, for example, you could drag and drop any player image. And also let's make sure that we select the player node again and we add a collision to it, okay? Then we're gonna go to shape and you can add any shape to it. In this case, due to the shape that we have here, a rectangle will be the best thing. So let's just make this a little bit bigger, something like that. And with this, the player scene is done. Now, when we want to run this scene, okay, with this button, run current scene, you're going to see that, yes, we can kind of move the player, but we have no ground. So let's add the ground. So for this, we're going to be needing a brand new scene. It's gonna be, in this case, a 2D scene. I'm gonna rename this node to be main and i will save this scene in the corresponding scenes folder i just saved it with ctrl s which as you can see is the shortcut for saving a scene as simple as that 
And over here, what I'm gonna be doing is selecting the main node, go to this button that is instantiating a child scene, and I will instantiate the player, okay? As simple as that. Now that I have this, what I also want to instantiate over here is the ground. And by the way, here I will pause a second for you to understand this. So as you can see, we have a player scene and then we have it connected in a main scene. Why did we do that? Because now I want to add a ground and we cannot add the ground in this player scene, okay? And the other question may be, okay, why didn't we just create the main scene and just added the player over there? Yes, that could have worked, but it is just easier because we have better organization like this. Uh, instead of having everything in just one scene, every single node in one scene, we have one big scene, the main scene, which contains many scenes. You're going to see this better in a second. So for our ground, what we want to add is a static body. Okay. And then we just add here the same thing. So a sprite 2D and also a collision. Check that both your sprites and your collision are parented to a static body, okay? And not to um, like this, for example, okay? Like one on top of the other or anything like that. Everything should be connected, as you can see, to the static body. So... What I will do, I will order my notes like this, okay? And I will, once again, just load in the code icon. But what I will do here is using the scale tool, or here, scale mode. I will just scale it a little bit like this, just so that we have some kind of ground that we can walk on top of, something like that. And then in the collision shape, let's create a new one. Once again, a rectangle. Let me make it a little bit bigger in the Y axis. Sorry, we must not be in scale mode. So let's come back with control Z. Let's go to select mode, okay, with this one over here and with this one, okay? Because if not, we're going to be scaling it, but we don't want to scale it. We want to just modify the size. And talking about the size, let's just modify it over here horizontally. And now we can go back to the main scene, select the main node, press the instantiate child scene button and instantiate the ground, which as you can see right now does not exist because we have to firstly rename it to ground and save it. Now, let's make sure we have selected this main node, ground. Here we have it. And using the move tool, we can move it. So maybe something like this. So here we can also see better how we uh, were able to kind of connect two different scenes in just one. Could we have created everything in the main scene? Yes, but as you can see right now, it is well more organized, okay? Now we can run the main scene. And as you can see, here we are. So we can jump with the spacebar. We can uh, move with the left and right arrows. And what if we wanted to be able to collect some coins, for example? So we want to need exactly a brand new scene whose root node, in this case, is going to be an area 2D. Why an area 2D? Because we want this to be able to detect collisions, okay? Entering or exiting, okay? That's why. And by the way, why did we use a static body here for the ground? Because indeed the ground does not move it's always static so we have the area 2d let's add the sprite and on top of the area 2d let's select it again collision shape let me put the sprite again and i will make it a little bit smaller this time so maybe something like 0.4 and also i go to visibility modulate and this will go in this is going kind of to die the sprite so something like that just to make it yellow and I will also use a rectangle shape over here. Let's rename it to coin and let's save the scene as well. Now, what we're going to do is to come back to the main scene, select the main node, instantiate one coin and position it wherever you want. I will select it and press Ctrl D to duplicate it or you can also right click and press duplicate. And I'll just make sure to position some on my scene, maybe something like that. Okay, but now uh, we can still collect them, okay? If I collide with them or do whatever, they are not collected yet because we have not coded that behavior. So let's basically go to the coin scene and select the coin root node, attach a new script, okay? And I will save it in the corresponding scripts folder. So I will press on this button. I will uh, go to a parent folder, select scripts folder, open and create. We have some pre-made code here. We don't care about that. And we just go to the area 2D, go to node, Go to body entered, okay? We double click on it and press connect. So whenever this coin collects with any, anything, okay? Um, this function is going, on, is going to be called. Now we want to check if this body is the player. So what we're just going, going to be doing is, okay, if our body, 
okay dot name is equals to player exactly like this then what we want to do is to just um completely destroy that player okay so what we're going to be doing is just do uh, body dot q free sorry not the body because the body is actually the player so we just want to delete the coin so just q free we want to delete our steps and remember here we are kind of inside of the coin so now let's go to the main scene run the current scene and whenever we collect with the coin as you can see it's going to be collected if you liked how I explained, in the description of this video, you're going to be finding all my Goated courses. I even have a Unity course if you want. And the good thing about these courses, okay, is that, well, uh, with the link in the description, you're going to be able to have a huge discount of, as you can see, something like 71% off. So you will just be able to get them at just uh, $13. Once again, you have plenty of courses to choose from. So choose the one that suits you the most and see you there.